most of the situation of uh, most of the companies we are talking with, uh, APIs are still considered a purely technical uh, matter, uh, as you can see. Uh, but we believe that uh, API in general as a strategy and as a business strategy should be also on the focus on the radar of uh, CEOs and COOs uh, because it's basically a new tool that allows incredible leverage in many, many things. And what we did, we did a deck uh, that we tried to explain you how you could get your uh, CEO interested in the topic and why we believe it's mostly and foremost a business matter rather than uh, just a technical matter. Uh, once again, thanks to Webshell who's leaving uh, to help us, who helped us a lot with this uh, deck. And that started uh, with what we saw in the API world from a business perspective. Uh, so this is the definition of an API. Uh, but if you want to talk to your CEO, you'd better talk to him about it like that. Basically explaining him that API is basically uh, an outlet where you can plug your business to another business and have another business automatically process or do something for you. Uh, and that this is the relationship between API provider, which can be any company and any program that wants to use your API. Another good analogy is the car industry. If you look at the car industry since a few years, basically you could say that they are in the API philosophy. Uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago, a car maker was basically a craftsman that was doing everything uh, from uh, the tires uh, to the engine uh, to the shell of a car. And today, a car maker is basically a system integrator using standard components, standard process to create uh, from these standard components a new car. And uh, once again, this is a good analogy with APIs. Uh, because this is what basically allowed the car industry to optimize itself, uh, get more powerful, get faster, and get leaner. So uh, an API, uh, basically, if you explain that to your CEO, is basically an interface that allows you to interact automatically and without all the cost of physical uh, needs uh, with other businesses. The most famous one, and every CEO knows about this one because he's probably using it, is the like API, which we all use. And it's fairly easy to see that without the specific APIs, Facebook would have stayed within Facebook, thus only uh, spreading itself for Facebook users. And with the like API, no Facebook is everywhere. Uh, I mean, we, who would create a media without a Facebook like or an e-commerce site without a Facebook like button? And this made Facebook power today, which made him basically pervasive through all the web. And this is, for instance, why Facebook today is representing around 35% of all content exchange in the US, uh, only because they deployed this very simple and very basic like API. Uh, APIs are a big trend. You probably all know that. Uh, but this is to give you an, an idea of the acceleration of the API development. Just in the past five months, there were as many API developed as in the past 114 months. Uh, before that. So really it's a big trend and this trend is only public APIs. Uh, so if you look at public APIs, this is the one we're talking about. There's actually around 20 times that in private or internal APIs all over the world. So it's not only a trend they should look at, it's a trend they should look at because it's an incredibly fast moving trend and everybody, being it a small company or a big company, know is on, on the task of developing its own APIs and starting to look at how to use them with partners. Uh, just a few numbers that uh, could ring the bell. Uh, this is the number of billion calls to these APIs per day. So that gives you an idea, or that could give any business people an idea of the power of an API. This is several billion in and outs for these businesses just through their APIs every day. Uh, so it's kind of impressive if you look at Facebook, we talked about it, if we look at Google, but even smaller companies or less well-known companies like AccuWeather, which is basically a weather provider in the US, uses API to distribute its technology, its content, and they are getting results on huge volumes. It's also about money, and this is the most important part because somewhat uh, CEOs like to hear about money. API is not only a technology that makes it easier for IT guys to share content or to share processes. It's basically a way to conduct business. And if you look at just this number, Expedia Affiliate Network, which is completely running through APIs, is right now a $2 billion per year business. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the business scale it can give. 
because just through this one small API and an affiliation API, they were able to develop 90% uh, of their business from an external partnership standpoint. And all uh, industries are now moving toward thinking or developing APIs to interact. Uh, so for instance, internet and social were the first, developers and maps were the second, but now we see uh, e-commerce APIs, telephony APIs, uh, finance APIs, we're targeting vastly popular and uh, as a reference in France, there's at least eight companies and huge bank companies that are developing their APIs, creating developers' context and externalizing their R&D or the communication with APIs. Enterprises are going to it, music, photos, etc. At this point, there is not a single sector that uses data and exchanges data or processes that is not developing APIs and not moving toward that model. Uh, plus, there's hundreds of APIs every day. This is a small collection of a few. Uh, for instance, I don't know what to think about it, but I didn't know this one, Dev by Captcha, which is basically a Captcha cracking API. So if you want to spam, and there is a Captcha, you know even have an API that is dedicated to helping people crack Captchas on the web. Uh, and they make you pay, which is funny, not only by the number of time you call them, but by their success rate, meaning that you only pay their API if it successfully cracked the CAPTCHA. So once again, I'm not sure it's cool, but uh, one thing's for sure, there's APIs for everything and usages we wouldn't have thought of uh, maybe five or six years ago. A few case studies, because once again, if you want to convince a board, convince your CEO or your CEO to go to look at APIs, you need some numbers and you need some examples. And we did a little exercise. We took several companies and took the hypothesis that what API does really is let you focus on your core business. If you're a startup and you want to do something, there's plenty of functions that 20, 30 years ago you should have, have to do just because nobody else could do it for you. What API does basically is that it allows you to just focus on your core business, what you do best, and externalize, basically it's an outsourcing strategy, all the other things, uh, R&D, IT, logistics, marketing, human resources, finance, all your business functions can be outsourced and processed through APIs. And what that does, it allows you once again to go much faster, not to have to develop and manage all those components and create basically a Lego-based uh, business. Some case studies, and the idea is just to give you some raw number on what APIs can do. So Salesforce, you know Salesforce, it's a SaaS program, and basically they're using an API to connect their program with inside uh, applications or simply to use the product. And we made a little calculation. Uh, right now, uh, Salesforce um, has uh, 104,000 clients. If they had to hire a uh, sales team just to contract and imagining everything went very well, meaning that uh, you know, uh, every time they have a meeting, they make a sale. <laughs> and they are very, very efficient sales guys because as you see, we said this guy, a salesperson, could do three meetings a day, that's 200 day, work 200 days per year and makes $50,000 per year. So one such person is 600 meetings per year, and once again, we assume that uh, everything goes well and they just have one meeting. If they had to do that that way, without an API, it would have been a $9 million investment per year. So just by using APIs to outsource their sales force, which is uh, kind of their name, uh, <laughs> they were able to save somewhere or to have the power that they would have needed probably, this is underestimated, more than $9 million just to carry through. And once again, this is imagining everything goes well. Plus, it allows them to automatically connect with the most established applica enterprise applications. So not only don't they need a sales guy, they don't even need a technician to go help people set up the API. They already have available connectors that makes it very easy for IT team to integrate Salesforce with other applications. We talked a bit about it, but Expedia also was one of the first to develop an API. And now you can get probably mostly any content from Expedia, uh, if you're an external site, from their API. Same calculation, and that makes two billion revenue per year. This is the kind of uh, information you can put on your site from Expedia. Uh, that helped them a lot, of course, drive more traffic, because APIs are also a traffic source. 
create new revenue sources because they have uh, thousands of sites using their API and then distributing Expedia and distributing travel. So basically their API is a distribution channel. Number three, Netflix. You all know Netflix. It's a very famous US uh, rental um, company. They basically replaced uh, Blockbuster, which was the leader who went bankrupt. And they did also all their distribution through APIs. So if confronted to a choice, either wait for consumer to go to Netflix. That's cool, but that's not enough. What they do, did, they opened an API to allow any business, basically, to take up their catalog and allow people to rent on Netflix without being on Netflix. And if you look at what it does, now there's more than 800 devices that can stream Netflix content, devices plus applications. So right now what they did, they basically outsourced their core business, which is renting videos, to a community of 20,000 developers. I let you imagine the effort and the financial effort it would have been to contract, partner, meet, explain what uh, they could do to 20,000 external developers. Uh, we're in millions of dollars. Here again, just making an API available, not only did they were, were they able to outsource part of the development and be present on all type of uh, devices, but they also help solvabilize and develop a lot of other businesses. Some of them are segmented uh, rental companies. Some of them are just including the Netflix API or the Netflix business as a component of the business. But overall, they reach power and they gain their market share through their APIs. And same thing, if you do the calculation, if they had to develop all these applications by themselves, uh, it would roughly have costed them the equivalent of 20,000 developers that uses the API. So we made an estimation. Once again, this one is probably underrated. But it's an, under, an undergoing cost of $1 billion per year if they were to have a workforce just managing the equivalent of what their API does. So if you want to explain leverage, this is a good example of leverage of APIs. Through its one, Netflix was not only able to make money, be pervasive all over applications on all devices, but they somewhat saved one billion a year. This one you know by heart, I guess. Uh, this is their killer API, which was the connect with Facebook. So now what happens is that because of this application that basically just allows you to use your Facebook ID to connect to a new service, they gain rich, uh, rich in the sense of uh, scale. Uh, and it also did something for them, is that because they were very successful in it and because it was done at the same time Facebook was exploding, they, are be they became basically the standard credential to logging into any site. LinkedIn is running after them now. but just with an API, they are becoming the preferred method for everyone to connect to a website. Thus, they recover information on every site you connect to or you register to, and that gives them insight on what's happening on the web. And once again, if they were just to call, and this time we took uh, the salesperson that just would call businesses or emerging businesses, telling them, well, instead of developing your own credential and your own login, why don't you use ours? If they had done that, let's say that a salesperson from Facebook would make 10 calls a day, same metrics, so that's 2,000 phone meetings per year, and they all go well, <laughs> that would have been a cost just doing that for the call center of $55 million per year. <laughs> so same thing uh, as ever. Uh, if you look at this kind of example, it gives you an idea of the leverage that an API can give your business and the savings and the power we can give you uh, on a distributed world like the one we're starting to live in. And of course, it also allows them to very easy make very impressive partnership. As you read, no, their API is native in OS 6 or semi-native. And that's also a fantastic tool to quickly enable partnerships and to quickly uh, go into a deep business relationship, in this case, uh, with iOS 6 or Instagram. I'm rushing it because there are 80 slides uh, and I only have 20 minutes. <laughs> but don't worry, the full deck will be available after the presentation. <laughs> uh, Fitbit, I guess you all heard of it. So this one is interesting because it's not only a business API, it's also the first, one of the first APIs with a connected object. So Fitbit, you all know it, it's a small sensor that you put on yourself, actually Stefan has one. When you're running, when you're working, it monitors uh, a lot of things and it restitutes it. What they did immediately, they issued it with an API so that anybody can go and start using the data they are recovering from people using Fitbit. 
And it was very successful because basically what they did, these 20 apps were all built upon the Fitbit application. So Fitbit just concentrates on doing two things, this little device and storing the data and restituting in a simple way, a unique way. And they have all these partners that were created through the APIs that found new original, uh, and, uh, and uh, I mean, basically it's R&D externalization because all these people using the Fitbit application are creating new usage and making the Fitbit device a big success. So their business is building a device and they externalize through their APIs all the development and the business development of this little device to a community and as the result that's at least 20 apps but there are many many more that are using Fitbit. Uh, for instance this one uh, which is uh, providing you with your data of everything you do on a map uh, and this application is an external application map my run but it's using Fitbit as a partner. Same thing let's assume that they would have had all the ideas and all the good ideas to create application and services around their product they would have had probably to develop application. If we take the idea that roughly an iPhone application is around 50K dollars for development, that would have cost Fitbit as a business $1 million just to develop the 20 applications which, so on, which are successful. And I'm not factoring it, all the applications that were built upon Fitbit and failed and didn't work, that they probably would have had to try themselves or to test themselves. So even as an R&D tool, it's very interesting because they were basically able to uh, externalize all their R&D and all their service development strategy to a community through their application. So once again, this is the kind of leverage APIs can do. Uh, and as we saw, there's always two components, uh, an API, but the API is itself, as we say, is just a plug. What's interesting is the processing and the data you do behind it and what you can propose through your API. So what are APIs used for? Basically, they're used for the three basic things every business needs to do and, every and uh, risks doing. First is business development. APIs are very good for business development because if you want to partner with someone, if you want, for instance, somebody in Russia to uh, use your API, and develop part of your business in Russia with an API, it's easy, and your business development is handled by the API. And with leverage, once again, what's its node? What's, uh, once people and the development community know how to use it, it goes very, very fast. It's also, and we saw it with Fitbit, but we can think about Nike, we can think about AT&T, a product development tool. If you want people to try to think about new features, new usages, new services about your product, and uh, enhance your functionalities. APIs are also a very good way to do that because then people can test what you are processing, what you're doing well, and create new businesses with it and develop your product and its reach. Third one, less, a little bit more hidden but still there, it's also a very good supply chain management tool. So the, um, when you're using internal applications or uh, IT, uh, as we say, uh, I, uh, highly, dependent, highly business dependent application, Equally, uh, APIs allow you to source function, to source processing, to source data, to source reporting, and to partner and create very powerful business application, basically just focusing on choosing the right partner, uh, going to its API, recovering the processing, and booking in. So these three basic things are really the things that APIs can help you with. One very, very uh, simple example, if you're talking to a business person, is basically, you know, you take Google Maps and the Weather Channel API and you can create an original Meteo products. So you don't have any more to buy a completely packaged application or to find uh, very hard to um, and very capital intensive applications. They're already available and you just mash them up to create your own application. So we're going toward a world from a business standpoint when, where basically we'll be building uh, businesses out of Legos each part of the Lego uh, being an API to an external vendor. And what we called in uh, five years ago maybe the mashup web, which was the very beginning of APIs, now is getting very, very concrete because now tomorrow I can almost start a business if I have just a marketing idea or a usage idea without developing anything but basically a bunch of APIs that I will mash up and I can focus, for instance, on the consumer experience. And every part of a business can be handled through APIs. 
So we were talking at the beginning of the presentation of six reasons why. And basically what API can do for a business is first, of course, help you explore and develop new business models and new revenue streams. Once again, Netflix, Expedia, they show you that with just an API and exposing your business through this API, you can get distribution, thus new revenue, thus new developments. Of course, it's also a distribution channel. We saw that with Facebook, whether you're looking for extended reach, audience, or business. It's also a good way to externalize R&D. We'll go back to AT&T, but AT&T now is externalizing most of its R&D through APIs. So basically letting a community of developer and businessmen imagine for them what could be the next service, the next product. That's hundreds of dollars in savings, and that's a better quality, because basically when you have 200,000 developers using your APIs, chances are they'll be smarter than tell people in a room, even if they're working for you and if they are smart. It's, of course, a new partnership development tool. It helps you rationalize and control your resources. API, and that's something that uh, is uh, often in cooperation, not understood, is not only an access, it's an access and a contract and an access control. Meaning it's not because you have an API that everybody can come in and do whatever they want. It's controlled. You know exactly who's using your API and why and what's going on. And for instance, Amazon, uh, is very good at that because through their APIs and uh, all their business uh, through APIs, which is uh, basically their uh, uh, cloud business, uh, they know what's catching up. They can know very easily if they see, I don't know, a usage tripling in uh, every day for a month. They know something's happening in that area. And it's a very good tool to know what your jazz is taking or which one is getting traction. And of course, uh, if you're an IT guy, you can also use it to organize your IT inside through APIs. A lot of companies are starting to think about it right now. Even if it's just for internal purpose, it's a much better way and a much easier way to make sure that all your business applications are running together and that you don't end up with you know, a huge sophisticated application that are hard to maintain. You can have a lot of small teams just doing one part of the job and connect them all through APIs. So it's also a very good internal business tool and a very good way to gain flexibility and cost in IT. New business model, something you need to explain uh, to business people too is that it's not only the model on the left. APIs are not all free. Some APIs, can uh, you can pay the user, the user can be paid, uh, you can get affiliation revenue, you can do revenue share through APIs. So that's why we say it's really a business model. An API doesn't have to be free and open for everyone. It's also something that you can use to transact, conduct business, and generate revenue. Uh, a quick case study, if you're free, this is the kind of figure you can achieve. This is the one for the Facebook like. Uh, once again, what's impressive is the number two item, you know, 2.5 million websites in four years using uh, the Facebook API. That means that they have partnered virtually with 2.5 million other businesses. And that's in itself a very interesting example. But if you do business, Amazon, they have basically 905 billion object stores in their cloud computing uh, service. And that's a revenue of $750 million per year. That's not neutral, that's a lot of money. And the conversion to margin must be impressive. Plus, uh, it makes saving for their own partners because just using the cloud Amazon services, uh, NASA saved about $1 million just outsourcing to uh, their infrastructure to Amazon. Google, you have an idea of uh, what it does, and once again, you could consider, and we do, that Google AdSense, which is one of the most familiar products that you all use, I guess, if you have media site or audience site, is 30% of the revenue and is basically an API-run business. Another example, Comcast. Comcast used it internally just to facilitate between all their companies uh, the transactions and the interconnections of uh, systems. And that alone uh, made them save, and that's uh, from a case study they made it themselves, 8.5 billion revenue uh, that were created just using their own internal APIs for one of their business uh, on a project that would have taken months, if not years, if they didn't have the API strategy at their core. It's also a new distribution channel. We talked about Netflix. And it's fairly simple, where before you were obliged somehow to get your own audience to use your, on your website, to use that, your data and technology, an API is a very easy way, basically, to help people 
uh, getting contact on other sites and then reaching a much larger population. Once again, the Facebook Connect or the Facebook Lite example is probably one of the most more interesting one in that area, or the Netflix one, because not only did they manage to get distribution, they managed to get development and inclusion in devices, which is a challenge if some of you are in EOM, if they had to partner with all these people to do uh, their services, they probably still would be discussing with them. It's also a very good tool uh, for outsourcing R&D. Instead of being in the classic uh, way where you own your R&D and then you manage all the people, you can then use APIs to ease resource collaboration and gather a community of developers between your business and try to externalize R&D by having hundreds of people working on it. For instance, uh, AT&T reduced by a factor three its developing cycle by using an API and delegating to an open ecosystem uh, its development. Uh, and Twitter also used APIs and, for instance, over four, sev almost 750 last week uh, external applications were using Twitter API. It's a good tool for partnership. We just saw that. Uh, because basically it gives you all the leverage to meet partners all over the world with just one single point and you don't have, once again, to have sales guys or people doing it for you. A lot of people are doing it and for instance, few people know that, but Xignite, which is a data financial services business, is using API and that allowed them to partner with more than 900 clients in 47 countries, even very big ones, that are basically using their API to source their inside data and to source their marketing, strategic marketing teams. So that gives you an idea of the leverage it gives you. It helps you uh, secure your resources inside. Uh, so basically, once again, it's also about control. API is not just opening everything, it's also about controlling it. And and that can be also used internally uh, because if you use an, uh, an API REST uh, strategy, for instance, inside, that means once again that you don't have to build huge enterprise applications uh, and maintain them. And some of you, I guess, know the complexity of that. You can really gain in updatability. You just have to work on one component and everything else uh, which is connected with the API can use it. Flexibility, scalability, <coughs> cross-department. If you work with IT teams, you know that this is right now a very hot topic. <laughs> Almost done. Uh, for instance, Comcast, projects that would take months because there was no standards and they had to move applications. Since they completely moved to an API architecture, now they say that they can uh, create new products, new applications, or link a couple of systems in less than 30 minutes. So that gives you an idea of the gain in productivity that you can expect from that kind of strategy. And again, with APIs, we think tomorrow, uh, and this is already today, uh, that's how we'll replace uh, old rental house with Netflix everywhere. That's also a very good way to have uh, the newspaper industry reinventing itself. Uh, the newspaper industry is starting to think about APIs to distribute content and monetize it. So we'll probably see the first distributed newspapers in the next years. Uh, Reimagining the IT business, you know that one, but Amazon basically uh, created a huge business just using its infrastructure and opening it through APIs and that make them business and rich. Everything that's about connectivity will be reinvented by, by telephony APIs like Twilio that you are all heard of that allows me as a uh, not really good developer to create a complete suite of telecommunication application just using their API. Probably the enterprise or piece tomorrow. Uh, educational content will probably also be treated by APIs. So as you can see, you can pull on examples and examples, but a lot of things we were doing yesterday, tomorrow will be much more efficient, faster, easier, and simpler to use thanks to APIs. So the main message is that if today you're not thinking about API, your business is probably not in good shape. Because yesterday, APIs were basically used to connect machines with machines. Today, they are used to connect everything with everything as far as devices and applications. But tomorrow, everything will be connected, probably even myself, being it through a little device or through my iPhone. 
and APIs will be able to connect any business process, any people, any object for sale or not for sale, and create a new world where basically all the companies might be smaller, but will be much more networked, faster, more agile, and cheaper to operate. Thank you.